let's begin with Anno Mutationum, a gorgeous cyberpunk pixel art title where you're on a mission in this metropolis, having a nice mix of side-scrolling combat with exploration portions as you take on odd jobs to explore the city. Combat is a highlight with a nice mix of light and heavy attacks, but you will notice one SCP-682 as well, being a beautiful title worth a play. Wow. What? In the wake of the success of Overcooked, many indie developers have tried their hand at making similar local multiplayer co-op titles game. with healthy doses of chaos. And while these have been successful to various extents, none of them have taken mm -hmm. off like Plate Up has, where the magic ingredient is, no, not love, but rather a main ingredient is pixel and cooking. Pixel cooking. A roguelite structure to the game. I know, I know, some of you are beginning to groan, but this yes. does actually add something new to the genre in that okay. while the minute to minute action still involves you scrambling around trying to get the food ready, in between the. It, well, at, at first he was very right. It really looks like the very first part of the game was very, very still, but now the chaos. Look, look at the detail, right? There's so many people here. And I didn't really have the chance to look at the first part of the first game. But uh, this one looks like really from very simple uh, game looks goes to very extent and to very complex game. It looks like absolutely complete diner experience if you're a chef or head owner of the place. Kind of cool, right? Levels are where you can choose your upgrades from new recipes to equipment such as conveyors yeah, or turbo exactly. ovens where these do dramatically change up the flow of the game which keeps it exciting and is <laughs> best with some friends. Would you like some uh, some new food, please? Would you like some food? Time to eat, time to dine. Dine with us. Okay. If you love boomer shooters but with a modern twist, please do yourself a favor yeah. and pick up Nightmare Reaper, an all-action title that has you facing off against nightmarish yeah. creatures as you advance from one area to the next. Yes, it does have a roguelike structure and a little bit of a looter-shooter element, wait, wait, wait. but again, as is the case with Plate Up, it really does add to the experience. It's more about learning the weapons and getting into the flow of combat, whoa, reacting whoa, to looks, whatever the game throws at you, rather than memorizing level layouts, where you gain a currency in every run which can be used to unlock permanent upgrades. I like how the, sorry for pausing, but I like how the how the 2D animation blends in with pixel animations and the Doom-like graphics. Really, kind of Doom-like resemblance, right? Nailing that compelling gameplay loop. Wake up, sleeper. Okay, another Dreaming one. Again. Yeah, Some sorry. of you were pissed when I left Citizen Sleeper off my list of 15 during the mid-year recap, so I'm here to acknowledge that this is one of the best narrative RPGs both of the year and in mm. recent memory. You turn up for your friends, or you don't. It takes place in the ruins of interplanetary capitalism, where you play as a- I personally don't like those games where you need to read like horribly a lot of dialogue. But um, it's just me, what about you? Do you like reading a lot of dialogue? An escaped worker trying to find a way to survive on a lawless space station at the edge of society. Wake up, sleeper. Wake up. Your body is dying. The almost tabletop RPG-like mechanics of rolling dice and passing skill checks is neat, where you need to manage your energy and time every day with compelling characters that really do suck you in. But the best part is that this is not done, with one more free chapter to come in 2023, but the base game is great and should not be missed. Uh -huh. Wake up, sleeper. You are hunted. I don't know. It doesn't really... Probably in like strategic genre, this game is very strong and can compete with a lot of titles. But for me personally, it's 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 not so much appealing. But uh, I don't really know how this game was rated to be best game of the year in indie category. Strange. Break I don't know. Their Access their secrets. Finally, some action. The Mad Lads and Ladies of Prima did it. They went up against Nintendo and the largest media franchise in Pokemon and somehow managed to get a slice of that pie with Temtem, all by simply listening to Temtem. what the play. Yeah, it's like Tom Tom, the navigation. But this is not the navigation, this is monster taming MMORPG. Wait a minute. Players wanted and delivering exactly that. This is a monster taming MMORPG in a persistent world, giving players what Game Freak did not want to make. 
where based on the estimated sales figures, this has done very, very well for them. So hmm. much so that they scaled up to a team of 30 plus people and became an indie success story. Okay. Player housing, guilds, raids, and more are present, but the 2v2 combat with a stamina system is different from Pokemon, where post launch support seems to be going well and player numbers are holding up. So chalk one up on the scoreboard. Looks really beautiful. For the underdogs with this. Wow. Have you considered joining the game? Are you a fan of Pokemon? Oh, the music. There are a number of notable cozy games this year as well, one of which is the relatively underrated Bobble Dogs, where I do not see enough people talking about this great game. It looks like Germ. Germophobe's game. About it is a pet germs. simulation title where you're taking care of a hive of these mutant creatures named Bobble Dogs, which can breed and evolve with all sorts of weird characteristics. Where, and I don't say this lightly, there are Viva Pinata vibes emanating from this game, where it is all relatively low stakes and chill and is very pleasant. What the fuck? I'm so very happy to give a nod to Guardian Quest as well a gorgeous hand-drawn tactical deck-building RPG that comes to us from my home country of Singapore, where it does have roguelite elements Singapore. as well but do not be turned off because of that. In many uh, ways, this is I can see the painting style and the, and the, and the, I don't know, the user interface looks good, but I instantly dislike the fact that there's a very limited amount of animations and when it comes to uh, interacting player versus like environment right it's it's just two frames it's just one image of the character and second image of like character attacking animation and and that's it it's two animations oh probably there's gonna be like a death animation that's it so i i personally I, it cannot be appealing despite the wonderful game style that i believe it's it, it is wonderful as it was uh nominated and won in game of the year but for me personally, it I can't go in with this little info, with this little animation. Perhaps more similar to Darkest Dungeon, where there is a hefty campaign mode as well as the more run-based looks realm like mobile to game. choose from. So if you don't like the huh? roguelite structure of gameplay, the campaign will be the one to check out. I love the sheer variety of characters here, where combat is a highlight as well since positioning does matter, and add to that the fun of min-maxing your deck like in Slay the Spire and you have a fantastic title. In the wake of the popularity of Dark Souls, many developers have tried okay. to make their own Soulsborne games to varying degrees of success, Whoa. where Phimesia oh. is an example of a good one that most interestingly comes to us from a developer out of Taiwan. It does have a stereotypical amnesiac protagonist setup, where Hero needs to find out what happened to this plague-infested kingdom, where Kyrus You're seeing this? This is absolutely insane! Obviously, he has the power to shape and wield the plague as a weapon itself. The You're spreading the plague! Insane again! Combat is weighty and does punish you for button mashing, although they didn't go quite as far with the stamina system, but the deliciously macabre grimdark world and monstrous bosses are excellent and might be something to check out whoa. if you love the genre. Whoa, whoa, guys, this is amazing. I I'm not sure. I think this is something that we all should look forward to. I'm not sure. The video was released, the one that I'm reviewing now is... Um, like one month ago so i'm not too sure if this game is out but if the game is out i'm gonna be placing gta links uh what's the price of the game and if it's out or not but so i don't know stay tuned so far it looks gorgeous thank you so much for subscribing to this channel i uh, really appreciate that okay 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 okay. you already did that's cool um let's go okay next one why do they need assassins in Oh, I, I saw this game. I, I, I'm not sure what kind of YouTuber did review it, but it's uh, it's a game where you have like uh, popping up cards and those cards give you different abilities that you can go through the, the zone. Damn it's it. super engaging and uh, intellectual so game to play. Work. 
A game which people absolutely adore, which I appreciate, is Neon White, a time trial first person shooter that has you exterminating demons in heaven with a variety of weapons and their special abilities to help along the way. The main mode requires you to get through the level as quickly as you can, with the condition that you need to kill all demons in the level for it to count, we are frantically getting weapons, aiming and firing them at enemies, and then burning a card to use its movement abilities to get the next weapon or platform and so on, we are ranked based on your time and thus have instant reset and retry. The core action is great, but the writing not so much, but it's a good <laughs> game overall. God's judgement has nothing to do with it. Action, 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 action! Legends tell of a golden time in years past of great clashes, heroes, yeah. and triumphs. Now now, don't judge a book by its cover and that okay. while Symphony of War the Nephilim Saga was more or less built in RPG Maker, the developers had to wrangle that program to One of the first games that they made was in the RPG Maker. Make it do what they want and have made custom Memories. sprites to make this an excellent strategy RPG. <laughs> It is set in a world of conflict, of warring armies and even something more sinister lurking in the shadows, <laughs> where you notice that this style of game is not that common these days. This looks like heroes. Rather than right? individual units or heroes like in Fire Emblem, you are instead commanding squads of units whose composition and formation is up to you, being like Ogre Battle which is not drawn upon enough, making this one of the best tactics games of the year. Wow, looks looks like really like revamped Heroes 3 version. Looks looks awesome. Whoa, what's what's that? <laughs> Monk. I'm honestly impressed at how developer Drinkbox Studios does not miss, where they've made one great game after another, being best known for the Guacamele series of Metroidvania, wow. but made an impact with a new IP in Nobody Love the graphics. He saves the world. And I hate most of the things, but I love the graphics. <laughs> This is an action-adventure title where you play as a character named Nobody who finds a magic wand that allows him to transform into other characters, gaining use of their abilities as you attempt to save the world. Okay. Such a cool animation! This is very Skinner Box in design in that there are always meters to fill up which just unlocks more stuff, but the overall presentation and minute to minute action is fantastic, so colour me impressed and as a result, I cannot wait to see what's next from them, which wow. based on wow. their cadence might be another Amazing. two to four years. Amazing guys, amazing. Give me this game. Please. What's here? Soul there? One of the most wonderful time and resource management titles is Stack Lands, one where you're placing cards on top of each other to cause interesting things to happen, such as placing a villager on a berry bush to gather berries, where you need to ensure that you have enough food to survive at the conclusion of every month. Oh, it's like being a project manager in the game. Nope. You have to get coins to buy booster packs which might contain ideas which will advance technology all while having to fend off enemies like bears, rats or skeletons where it is at a low low price and is value for money. Yeah. I believe like this, I'm not sure how, how, how this game like appeared in, in the game of the year list but I somehow think like it's the very same thing as like Guinness World Record book. And there's like thousands of ways that you can that you can get on the book like thousands of records like i don't need even need to go into specifics like you can be tallest guy or you can be like a person who has shortest nails any sort of crazy stuff so i believe in gaming category there's niches within niches and games within games and you can be rated in best of those games and if there's like few games or none of those games are within this year, guess what? You're gonna be nominee or even a straight up winner in this category. It, it just it just blows my mind that there's like hundreds of uh, of games that was released within this year and this game was nominated. So I'm just a sucker for graphics. Sorry, sorry.
Okay. Resident Evil like. I'm not usually a survival horror person since I like my pants clean, but of course, I do have to give props to Signalis, a title which I've had my eye on for the longest of time and knows exactly what they are. Resident Evil like. Oh my. Are going for. This is an old school survival horror title where you play as a replica, delving into an off world government facility in search of answers. But the zombie like enemies do sure remind me of Resident Evil 1. Hold you. Oh my god. It has limited ammo, hard to kill enemies, key items, backtracking, and even tank controls. But if you love this very classic genre, do yourself a favor and pick oh this up. Oh my god, so beautiful. Scared a bit, but that game looked awesome. What is this? Dropping a couple of spots <laughs> since we last took a look is Infernax, a classic Vania style. Wait. Dropping a couple of spots since. What the f? Since we last took a look is Infernax, a classic Vania style action platformer that is more in line with early Castlevania titles as compared to Symphony of the Night. You play as a knight, returning to your homeland, only to find it overrun with evil and unholy magic, now making it your mission to cleanse the land. I don't know, all, all, like 9 out of 8 times when they hear like metal music playing, it's like pushing the limits too hard. I know that Doom, Doom game, like they're making a uh, perfect appearance of like metal moving, because metal music because you're bashing through the enemy's skulls in a really, really hard way. But here, pixel graphics, limited appearances of stuff happening, and you have metal playing. I just can't, can't. For me, it just sound design and automatically just boils down the game to the very bottom of, of the list for me. I can't really look at this game Most interesting seriously. Game. Even ignoring the fact the very first enemy that was shown in this video reminded us of... Yeah. This has choices to make, which does affect the story. It comes to us from the legendary Berserk Studio, who are game dev legends, but they also nailed the visuals here. Of course, I have to pay tribute at the altar of Vampire Survivors, probably the most successful title in terms. I own this game. This is an absolutely wonderful game. If you haven't tried this, so pure numbers you're missing out. Over the 11 months or so of early access, where people throw about the term genre-defining or characters? willy nilly, but it is true in this case, since the success of this has spawned a whole bunch of clones for better or worse. Yeah. We're looking at the expansion DLC which just released, which added 8 new characters, 13 new weapons, a new stage, new music and more unlocks to make this even better, but if you're not familiar with the core game, it has you killing enemies and picking up XP and upgrades, selecting weapons and relics that do combine and evolve into more powerful versions that allow you to absolutely destroy hordes of oncoming monsters. It is the reverse of a bullet hell title where you are the one spewing out all the attacks and projectiles, hence the term bullet heaven, <laughs> and while it is compelling and fun and great, the quote unquote gameplay has you moving around on an infinitely scrolling map being one step above an idol game, so I'm not that comfortable ranking away. it among the top 10, but it is probably the game of 2022. Yeah, so uh, speaking about Vampire Survivors, I'm just gonna, gonna look back a bit. Uh, the thing is, it's uh, I believe it's it's very hard to understand what, what is going on, so I'm gonna give you a brief overview. So in this game, basically all you do is just run around and you have auto attacks towards enemies. And you can see all of these floating numbers and, and, and animations and explosions and stuff. This is like when you pick up blue thingies, you get level ups. And during those level ups, you get new abilities. New abilities to... Uh, kill monsters and be even stronger like and there's a lot of abilities a lot of levels and all you do is just walk around avoiding enemies that would just walk on you and hit you so that you could kill enemies faster and the thing when it the, the fact where the game gets you interested and in, invested a lot is that uh, more time passes more enemies gonna appear and you will have more of the cooler and stronger abilities so at the end you will have screen filled with enemies like you can see here and uh, it just feels awesome the game itself is super cheap i don't i don't remember maybe i bought the game for like five euros or something um 
and it's it's totally worth it it's it you can easily sink in like 20 hours or so in this game and it will not require any sort of uh dedication for you to play this game and it just it's absolutely worth game to try and worth uh, worth worth a purchase that comfortable ranking it among the top okay. 10 The game with the unenviable task of following up from Vampire Survivors is Kuromon, a pixel art monster taming RPG that I have to mention as mm -hmm. a fan of the genre, since I grew up with Pokemon and this is indeed a nice throwback. Looks Pokemon. I love the pixel art Kuromon designs, especially True. those that more resemble animals rather than the elemental bosses, where, like Temtem, the developers are fans of the genre and have built in things like Nuzlocke mode, but I'm happy to <laughs> see the success of this game. Hemorrhoids look cool. Oh snap, wait, 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 wait. Hey! Did I miss something? Ah, oh, I can miss the calmness. The relaxing city builder is also another trend, with games like Islanders and Townscaper leading the way, but the game that took the idea and ran with it is Dorf Romantic, perhaps being the most successful game in the genre and most impressively is from a team of four fresh graduates from a game development program in Berlin, where they knocked it out of the park on the first try which makes me excited. Guys shout out if you're from Berlin. <laughs> for their future. Because why not? Why not have a shout out? It's, it's about time to have shout outs, right? This game looks beautiful. Shout out to people from Berlin. Thank you for making this gem. You are rotating and placing tiles down in order to maximize bonuses to get more points for more tiles, to the extent that you may build infinitely, but the game is over when you do run out and have to start over, but it's so mm. low stakes with pleasant art and music, which makes this the perfect title to chill out to. Looks Really, really gorgeous. Whoa. Dig, defend, develop, dig. I've been very impressed with Dome Keeper ever since I came to know of this, but a little known fact is that I spotted this way what back in September 2021 when it was still known as Dome Romantic, which is why you should subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up with all things indie games. Oh my god, this looks cool as hell! This is a defense rope light where you're building up your defenses and fending off waves of alien creatures to prevent them from destroying your dome, having to go underground to dig for resources in between. So cool. Whoa, this looks cool. This looks like sick cool. This has fun upgrades, different playable characters with more to come, FIFA and some cool. interesting meta progression that is not that grindy with a great pixel art look as well. Mm. Mm. I've been keeping an eye on Have you seen this game? Mm. Prudius through early access since it made a great first impression where it has risen to the occasion and became an absolute yeah. must play in the indie boomer shooter space. If you haven't seen this game, I covered this game uh, like in my previous video. I'm going to be placing a link down at the top somewhere. And uh, yeah, this is like Doom like shooter. This is an amazing game. I'm, I'm absolutely no surprise that this game was rated one this of the games in the, in the year. what all good retro games do, in that this tricks your brain into thinking back to how the original Doom made you feel, but if you actually compare the visuals, there is a vast chasm in between, with awesome feeling weapons and Made by two developers, this is insane! ...an action, which is great as well. What's going on? Esther Libra Revision is a 2D side-scrolling action platformer RPG that is from a solo Japanese developer, developed over the course of 15 years or so, and is relatively underrated, where this has leveling, loot, and skill progression, okay. with multiple possible builds as you make your way through the world, destroying the monsters that stand in your way as you confront time and fate themselves. The monster designs are awesome, and this is very Japanese in design, from the overwhelming yeah. amount of activity on screen, I'm not a fan of those games, but games, Game 2 looks really well polished. Huge numbers popping off enemies, as well as giant screen filling bosses. It is relatively underrated, all things considered, and is a style of game that is not that common these days, once mm -hmm. again showcasing how awesome indie games can be.
I still cannot believe that we are getting Heroes of Might and Magic Likes again in 2022, <laughs> where Hydro MM3 Whoa. is one of my favourite games of all time, where I love it that Heroes Hour managed to put its own spin on things. The hero-focused overworld exploration and resource gathering is there, but combat is turned into a real-time auto-battler with massive armies clashing, rather than the <laughs> less impressive stacks of creatures in Hydro MM, where this is such a loving tribute that it what? has to be mentioned. Okay, f first of all, we finished this look. How do you feel about this game? I, I personally, I think, uh, for me, it just feels too pixely, pixely, right? I, I love pixel games. It's it's really cool, but playing this type of game and this environment, I can see that there's a lot of movement, a lot of attacks going on, but seeing a lot of pixels in one screen, it's just a little bit mess. I don't know. I I, I wouldn't go. I would bid too high on this game. It has to be mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about this game. This is like, I, I believe this Surprise, is one guy my original who made this. Game of the year at the mid-year mark was Tunic, which of course has dropped a couple of spots, but it is still in the respectable top five, where Zelda: Like a Fox is still awesome yeah. and is not to be missed. Insane. Exploration in games is the most important factor, and Tunic does it very well, where you weaken on a mysterious landmass and are just set free to explore. Man, so it's so beautiful, so peaceful. It is rather beautiful. cryptic and does not hold your hand at all, where the revelations down the line are equal parts amazing, but might also make you slap your forehead, where the <laughs> sense of wonder and discovery makes this a truly special game. Wow, wow. On paper, Cult of the Lamb is perhaps the most successful in the game of the I year, selling a stupid amount of copies at a price significantly higher than Vampire Survivors, which means more revenue, where the Devolver marketing machine was in full force with this, and to be honest, is a great title which is very compelling. It also does something sneaky which I appreciate as well, since it is a management title first and an action roguelike second, where combat mm -hmm. is just okay and is perhaps more about optimizing your compound and keeping your followers happy, but it is very good and earns a well-deserved number 3 spot. Yeah, it's literally like, you are the lamb and you are making your cult, and cult is about sacri sacrificing blood and summoning weird stuff as well. It's a weird game. Um, it's a nice, nice game, but uh, not not the best, but definitely worth a try. What's that? All right, my biases are showing, but hey, it's my list, and as a fan of old school JRPGs, of course, Chain Echoes has to be mentioned. Perhaps the best indie JRPG to come along in recent memory. Hmm. Final Fantasy White. Putting the obvious gorgeous pixel art aside, which heavily skews my opinion, yeah. the other aspects of this game are excellent as well. The story has a typical setup where our protagonist is a young mercenary thrown into an increasingly dangerous war between kingdoms, but has a supporting cast of unique and well written characters, each with their own motivations. <gasps> Fell in love with the sheep. Sheep lava. The turn based combat. Mm, looking at this video, I really can't wait to jump back into Final Fantasy. An overdrive system makes you use strategy in combat rather than spamming the same abilities, where the response time of everything is very snappy and is not drawn out. And then you mm. have an excellent unconventional leveling system and the addition of mech units that, of course, evokes Xeno Gears, and you have a winner. And the best indie game of the year goes to... Come on, come on! Rogue Legacy 2. Some of you may not know this, but I have some history with the original Rogue Legacy from 2013. Whoa, I didn't whoa, even what's it going launch, on? But picked it up in 2014, which is when everything changed. I remember spending hours and days yeah. late into the night. I think I played this one on mobile. Like plowing through that game, getting a newfound appreciation for indie games which has led me down this path where the YouTube channel is today, where the sequel felt like catching up with an old friend who has since grown and changed as much as whoa. I have in the 8 years or so since then. Whoa, whoa. 
I love the new character classes and progression systems, but the whole children succeeding you when you die portion has also hit home since I've had a kid myself in the years since the first game with a core gameplay loop that is excellent and propelling, so I am more than happy to bestow the award. We can watch these videos nice, for a review of nice, 2023. Nice, nice. Great video, great video, great video. Thank you guys for watching. I, I personally was a fan of this video. There's gonna be a lot of uh, titles within this one. This original video was produced by Best in the Games. You should see that on the top now. And um, thank you guys for watching uh, and see you in the next one. Peace.